Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? Chris I Tony is back with another video here. We are breaking down some cinematography for you guys today. I'm basically breaking down a couple scenes that I chose from a movie that I just shot a couple months ago. And hopefully you guys will enjoy this video because I think there will be some very valuable information on how I lit it, how I composed it, and what it took to actually make those scenes happen. So let's dive into it. Alrighty, so we're gonna start with this big wide shot. So in this scene, these two main characters, they come to this warehouse and they are trying to look for some clues. So we actually shot this scene at night. Um, it's a day scene as you can tell here, but we shot it at night because um, the schedule just worked out that way. And you might be like, holy crap, how did you do that? Well, super easy, and I'm gonna show you how. So we got our A camera to set up a big wide master. So this is the first shot of a scene that you'll usually tend to start to light first is the big wide shot. Usually this is where you establish all the character actions, the whole scene, and the master is what kind of holds the whole scene together so that the editors can cut between you know the close-ups and see all the actions. So, so how we approached it was, I basically pounded a couple lights through these windows here. You can see right here in these windows, there's light coming through. And what that did was, it just created this beautiful hard slashes on the ground. You can see this beautiful hard light, these extra hot spots, and you can see it in the background here on this ladder. You know, and it's kind of edging the characters here. So why I chose to do this was because I wanted this to look like day, obviously, and I wanted it to look a lot contrastier, a lot more dingy. So I wanted to push light from one side. So I pushed it all from this side coming, you know, through these windows. And then there was literally no light on this side at all. This was basically the negative fill side, which is the dark side. So I wanted to hold that contrast. And I felt like these hard slashes on the ground here really sold that it was day, because usually when there's broad daylight, you'll see in your house that there will be like little slashes of hard light. And I think that really sells it. These hard slashes also give a little bit more life to the frame. I love adding highlights into the frame. So it was a pretty simple setup. I used um, RE9Ks, which are HMIs. They're not LED. Um, I used this because it allowed me to get my lights further back away from the windows and it allowed me to get these longer streaks of light. If I was using like Aperture 1200Ds, they wouldn't be powerful enough at the distance I had my lights. Very simple, it was just three light setup, and then here we are. I think I also played um, a Sky Panel 360, which is this massive light um, in this back room over here, and I think I pushed that through a 12 by 12 silt. So moving on to the next image here, um, this was another master shot or another wide shot that was happening at the same time. So on our show, we had two camera teams. And basically what that meant was we had two cameras. We had A camera and B camera. So A camera was usually the main camera who was getting the main shots of the scene, but then we had a B camera or a backup camera who was getting secondary shots, which turned out to be very sexy shots that were just bonus shots for the edit and the director. So um, sometimes it can be a challenge working with two cameras because you want both cameras to um, complement your lighting. You know, if I brought my camera around to the front side, that wouldn't be complimenting my lighting and start looking really flat, right? So that's something that you need to communicate as a cinematographer to your camera operators. Usually I get camera operators to compose shots because I think that allows me to really focus on the lighting. I really enjoy collaborating with operators and um, communicating to them what my vision is, what the director's vision is. So um, that's a really fun part of being a cinematographer is being able to communicate uh, your vision to other people who are part of the creative process. So in this shot, it's exactly the same lighting setup because it was happening at the same time as the previous shot I was showing you guys. So we just had these um, blown out windows with the 9Ks coming through. And in a bit, I'll show you what these 9Ks look like. Um, and basically it's just creating this beautiful hard light on the ground and just edging our characters here. So a rule of thumb for me as a cinematographer, you don't have to follow this, but basically what I found to look really good and that developed my own style was always shooting on the dark side. And what I mean by that is always putting the camera where the shadow side is. So you can see here that the camera's facing the dark side. So you have all this shadow on these characters facing the camera. And then the key light, which is the backlight in this instance, is on the opposite side of camera. This looks really good. This looks a lot more three-dimensional because if I flipped the image, if I brought the camera on the front lit side, it would look really flat. It wouldn't look creepy. It wouldn't look moody. It would look really flat 
and wouldn't look too good. So I always tell my operators, please shoot on the dark side, the shadow side, and then usually know what that means and they will help complement your lighting. It's crazy how your composition really affects your lighting. So my approach to that is I will work with my operators, we'll set our frames up, and then from there, I will figure out where my key light comes from. But usually in pre-production, I already know, I already build out these plans. We build out a shot list with the director. So I already kind of know where everything is gonna be placed. So it moves a lot faster. You don't really wanna waste time on set as a cinematographer. I think that is honestly the secret sauce to cinematic lighting, always putting your camera on the dark side. This was kind of a tip that my mentor taught me and I've just followed through with it most of the time. Sometimes you can't avoid shooting on the front lit side. Honestly, like shooting on the dark side is gonna make your images look so much better. Like that's what honestly elevated me. I was wondering why my images were looking so flat. It's because I wasn't shooting on the shadow side. I saw these windows in the location scout here and I knew that's how I was gonna light this scene and I knew we would shoot it at night. And also these fluorescents up here were another thing that were on during the location scout and I decided not to use those because it kind of just flattened out the entire image. It just kind of washed it all out and I didn't think it made it contrasty at all. Um, so I kind of avoided using that and I just pushed light from one side to kind of keep that contrast. So this is the outside of the location here. You can see that it's nighttime out here. These are our HMI lights here, all three of them. These are called the 9K HMIs or M90s. Basically, they're really powerful lights and you can see that we're able to get enough distance here so that the throw or the angle of the beams of light inside the warehouse were really long because I really wanted that really long shafts of light. I thought it would look really cool and it worked out pretty nicely. Okay, so let's dive into the close-ups here. So after the master shots, you go in for the close-ups, which are usually tend to be where you detail the characters. The lighting setups will tend to change usually during this period um, because this is where, you know, you start moving lights to start detailing the characters or the subject. A secret sauce tip that I want to give you guys to cinematography is the eye light. In every close-up of a character, I always add an eye light. And what does that mean? So an eye light is this glimmer in his eyes. And if I didn't add that, it would look very dark and lifeless. Highlights always draw the audience's eyes. So you wanna be drawn to the character. So these eye lights give that visual connection to the character. So usually what I do naturally, since I'm shooting on the dark side, as you can see here, you know, the shadow side is facing camera. This is the camera, this little triangle box thing. The shadow side is facing camera. And then my key light is coming from this side, right over here. And since it's over on this side where the character is looking naturally, his eyes are catching the light inside his eyes. So you can see that this is just the key light right here in his eye. So here we have the kind of the breakdown of the lighting for this shot. So what we did here, we left the 9Ks pushing through these windows and this just kind of filled the room with ambience lighting and just created the hard slashes in the background. This wasn't the key light because these were so hot and so um, harsh that we didn't use that. So what we did, we brought an eight by eight diffusion right here. So this is an eight by eight diffusion. I think I use a silk and then we added an egg crate or soft crate to that. And basically what that does, it allows light to go in one direction instead of spilling everywhere, right? I always try to control light. I don't like it when it's spilling and bouncing off of everything because then it becomes really hard to create a contrasty and shadowy dimmer image. So I always try to control my light and this is a tool that helps you with that. So basically this key light was just pushing right here onto his face, you can see it right here. And then we had a bunch of negative fill. So we had a flop right here on the, on the dark side with a 12 by 12 solid just to stop any light that was bouncing off of glass or any other materials on the uh, negative fill side. So then we also had two cameras here. We had our A camera right here. This is our operator Max. And this is our B camera operator, Miguel. So both of them were getting uh, different coverage angles at the same time. And we had uh, two 1200D apertures pushing through this eight by eight. And the reason for that was because I had to have a, a brighter key light because my um, 9Ks were so bright. So I had to kind of balance that out and bring all the levels up to, you know, ND into my camera. So that was kind of the approach towards that. And you can see one other light right here. And this light right here was a Titan tube. And I had the same thing. I had a, uh, or actually it wasn't a Titan tube. It was an aperture tube. Um, it's their new kind of 
tube. I don't know what it's called, but it was an aperture tube. And then it had its um, um, directional crate on that as well. So um, called the light tools. Sorry, these these uh, these egg crates are called light tools. I call them egg crates because they kind of look like those boxes, um, but it's called light tools. So this Titan tube had light tools on it as well, just to kind of wrap the key light because it was too harsh on his um, shadow side, it was too black, so I really, really wanted to, to just wrap the light a little bit more. You can see here, it kind of falls off on his dark side a little bit more, and that's that tube working in there. And it's also catching in his eyes as well. And then this is the B camera angle. It's a secondary angle to this um, shot, and it was happening at the same time. You can see here, it's just a lot more contrasty because when you bring the camera around to more profile, it's gonna look darker, it's gonna look more contrasty because it's only seeing the contrasty shadow side and not really seeing the lit side. So you have more of a hard um, uh, rim light, you know, along his face here, right? It's more of an edge than like the key light that you saw in the previous image, but it's the same lighting setup. So yeah, that was his close up and um, he was a really fun character to light because he had so much character in him. He had a great face to light. This is another thing you're gonna to start to notice as a cinematographer or just as a filmmaker when you're lighting multiple faces, skin absorbs and reflects light very differently. So a lighting setup is not gonna necessarily work on every skin tone or every skin complexion. His skin was very like, it had some, you know, crevices and things like that, um, but he absorbed light and reflected light really nicely. Um, so it was very nice to light. Um, it was really easy. You didn't really have to worry about softening the light, but usually for some female faces or things like that, you have to get a little bit more extra work. You have to, you know, uh, soften the light a little bit more, um, depending on the style, obviously, but I found you usually tend to want to have like a softer light on the female faces because then it's a lot more flattering. So yeah, we're into the next close up here. Um, basically the same setup. We had the eight by eight diffusion with the light pushing this way and creating this beautiful soft light here. I think I actually added a little bit more diffusion like a four by four in between the 1200Ds going through the eight by just to soften the light a little bit more just to, you know, make that shadow a little bit less harsh and just give a little bit more um, softness to her skin because she really, um, her skin really looks good in soft light to what I was saying before is like female skins usually look really good with soft light. So, um, and then we had the same amount of negative fill on this side. I think I added maybe a bounce just to kind of lift her dark side a little bit more because she is the main character and usually the networks want to see their faces a lot more. So I just added a little bit more light, nothing crazy. I didn't add a light, I just added bounce. I don't tend to really like to add light, like a like an actual lighting fixture to the fill side, um, but I do like to add bounces because then it kind of feels a little bit more natural, but depends on your preferences and stuff. So here's another uh, image uh, behind the scenes here, our eight by eight diffusion pushing our light here and then there's a 12 1200d right here and the 9k is coming through the windows so yeah super simple setup i usually get away with like a one light key light kind of thing um i know there's cove lighting and all these other things i've tried that i do like it but when you're shooting network tv you need to move fast so we try to do very minimal setups very fast setups so that dives into another aspect of like being prepared you know pre-planning so you know this movie was for network tv so i had to be fast especially if i wanted it to look good you know that takes time so i had to be really prepared as a cinematographer to you know know the answers know what to do know what to tell people to do so these are things you really have to practice um to you know get to these different kind of leaks you can see here again the eye light that's the key light. You can see that's the eight by, that's the eight by eight diffusion going right in her eyes, catching in her eyes there. So it looks really beautiful. It gives life to her eyes. It makes it look watery. It makes you want to connect with that character, right? So very important to have those eye lights. I played around with not doing eye lights and it just really doesn't give any life to the characters. This shot was happening at the same time as the last shot I was showing you. Um, the key light, one direction, and then just the negative fill super easy lighting is very simple you don't have to go super complicated i see a lot of people they go really complicated with the lighting it doesn't have to be that complicated it can look really good with very simple tools and just 
understanding where to place your camera. It can be a very simple process. Here's another scene and a shot that I really, really enjoyed in this movie. This is a scene where she's in the shower, obviously, and believe it or not, we only played one light. We used the aperture tube again right up here, right up here in the ceiling, and we just pushed light like this. And we kind of angled it so it was more of a backlight. Um, you can see here it's just, you know, edging her face very beautifully, and then it's just this beautiful shadow on this side. And once again, same theme. We're putting our camera on the dark side because that is what gives that three-dimensional look. That's the secret sauce, guys, is to have your camera on the dark side because that's what's gonna create three dimension, right? If I had the camera on the other side, it'd look flat. So here we are. And also another tip is if you wanna see rain or if you wanna see water falling in an image, you need to backlight it. So this key light is technically a back backlight. It is backlighting this water over here on the side and you can really see it because it's really defined. So this image was super simple. It just had the backlight and then just had some negative fill on the other side and then had some haze in here just to steam up the shower. This is another angle of the same scene. Um, so same thing, we have the tube pushing from above and you can see it's just so soft on her. You know, it's just pushing this way and it's backlighting all this water in the foreground. And then look at this guys, look at this once again. Boom, beautiful eye light in her eyes because the light is up there. It's in the direction of where she's looking. And just look at that. Look at how much life it's giving to the image. So this is the last image of my examples here today. Um, but this is one of my favorite images from the movie. It's so simple. It feels so natural. And how do we like that? So how I look at lighting as a cinematographer is you look around you, you look at the real world and you look at lighting. Where's light coming from? Usually light is coming from one source. So I like to play with that theme of playing with one source lighting. So here we are with a one source lighting once again, and you can see with all my images, it's one source lighting. So here we have the backlight, it's the sun. She's just waking up in the morning from a nightmare. So we have this sun just kind of backlighting her through this window back here. And it's just creating this beautiful edge around her, right? So basically it was just one light and it was backlighting her. And I just set my camera to 6,500 Kelvins. That was because I wanted a warmer look and we didn't have any gels and we didn't have a bicolor light. So I just did it in camera and then we just color graded it to make it a little more saturated. Um, but that's how we did it, super simple. And then I think there was a, like a window right over here on this side. And that was creating this beautiful eye light in her eyes, which is like this happy accident, you know? So it's just worked out really nicely. And then right before the take, I just found a really dirty rug and I shook it. And you can see all these like little dust particles right here, just create this beautiful texture in the air and just looks so gorgeous. And was kind of like that extra little sauce on the image. So it was really beautiful worked out really really nicely so all right guys so that is the end of this video i know i'm in a different background right now um it's because i actually forgot to shoot the end of this video but that's the end of this video i hope you guys enjoyed it please leave a comment down below if you guys want to see more of these kind of videos of me breaking down different lighting setups and different scenes so let me know in the comments down below please like subscribe follow me on social media and i'll see you guys in the next video